Hey loves, it's Shelby and today we're going to be exploring why you should praise God despite your misfortunes. If this is your first time here, I just first want to say welcome and thank you so much for joining today's video. If you're a returning subscriber, welcome back and as always, you know I love you. My name is Shelby. I am the blogger behind Shelby.com. Today I am sharing the very first video that is going to be a part of our Blemished But Beautiful Bible study series that I'm doing in partnership with Cassandra and we are so excited to share these ladies of the Bible with you guys. Um, so um, without further ado, just go ahead and make sure you hit the like button. Don't forget to subscribe to both of our channels and let's hop right into the Bible study. So in order for you to get the most out of this um, blemish but beautiful Bible study series, um, especially for part one and part two that I'm doing with Leah and Rachel, you're going to want to make sure you take the time to read Genesis 29 as well as Genesis 30 and you're going to read in the book of 30 particular or the verse, the chapter 30, I always struggle with that, you're going to want to read verse 1 to 24 um, and that will help you to kind of read it for yourself, take your own observations and um, you might have some additional lessons that you took from the study and if that is the case, I definitely want to hear from you so make sure you drop down in the comments below to share what your thoughts are um, from reading the series. I think that it is reading the study <laughs> I think that it is um, a, some there are some very valuable lessons to be learned and taking away from both of those ladies so for the first part of this series I am actually going to be talking about Leah so I originally was going to only talk about Leah but I decided that Leah and Rachel although they're interconnected with their stories I felt like there were two different lessons um, that I really wanted to talk about and I didn't think I can talk about both of them in one video. So for today's video we're going to talk about Leah and on my next video I will talk about Rachel. So what you're going to want to do for this series is to make sure you read Genesis 29 and you'll also want to read Genesis 30 um, verses 1 to 24 um, and that will help you with understanding what we're talking about today. It'll also give you a chance to read it for yourself um, and see if there's anything that maybe you pulled out of the um, reading that maybe I didn't talk about and you can drop down in the comments below so that we can talk about it some more. And Leah are sisters. Um, Rachel is described as being beautiful. Leah is described as having weak eyes. Obviously, you know, when we read those two descriptions, we are going to think that these physically, obviously, who who's going to be the one that someone's going to choose to want to marry? Obviously, it's going to be Rachel. So needless to say, when Jacob comes into town and he um, he sees Rachel, he's attracted to her and he asks for her hand in marriage. Unfortunately for Leah being the older sister and with the customs of that time, um, <laughs> her dad basically, he does something that's very dis deceptive and dishonest and on the wedding night after Jacob has worked seven years he gives Leah to Jacob instead of Rachel um, because in their custom and in their practice it is um, the firstborn has to be married married first before the secondborn can be um, unfortunately he didn't explain that to Jacob <laughs> uh, before he worked seven years um, so Jacob wakes up in the morning to find that it's Leah that he has, you know, spent his wedding night with and he is obviously not happy. And if you can imagine that being your first encounter, you know, or your your morning after with your husband, that is a that has to be a terrible <laughs> terrible first morning of marriage. Um so God bless her heart. So obviously when people talk about Leah and, and Rachel, we usually tend to feel bad for and side with Leah um, because she is put in this unfortunate situation that she didn't ask for. Um, she didn't do anything wrong, but she ends up being basically the, the scapegoat, you know, people... Uh, um, I don't want to say people, you know, her uh, her sister and um, Jacob, they're not taking out their anger on Levon, his, um, her dad, they're taking it out on her. So, you know, she's in this marriage with someone who doesn't want to be married to her, who <laughs> 
has basically just in his eyes just gotten stuck with her and she feels that and she not only feels that tension from her husband but she also feels that tension from her sister who's looking at her thinking you've stole my husband you know and she's just doing what her dad told her to do um so it's it's a sucky situation to be in and so Leah is stuck and basically in between a hard, a rock and a hard place. I was about to totally butcher that phrase. Um, <laughs> she's stuck in between a rock and a hard place. She's married to Jacob, um, who was, who her sister thought that she was going to be married to, didn't think she was going to have to share Jacob with her sister. And basically she's in the household with people who really don't want anything to do with her. Um, and blame her for something that is completely out of her control. You know, she, I'm sure Rachel and Leah both had to know what the customs were of that time. So I don't know why Rachel would be mad at her sister um, if they both, I'm sure they both had to know like the customs of that time was that the older sister had to be married before the younger sister. Um, so that that for me, I'm like, I don't understand where the discord are. I, I get being upset, but as her sister and knowing that it's your dad who made the decision I don't really understand you know that separation like that for me was like mm. it kind of made me sigh I Rachel but we'll we'll leave Rachel to <laughs> for her video um so <laughs> so Leah is stuck in between a rock, rock and a hard place um she has not only Jacob who basically doesn't like her doesn't really want to be married to her but she also has Rachel, her sister, who, you know, you're supposed to have a relationship and a bond with your sister, um, who is basically like, why are you here? You know, why are you in this household with my husband? Um, and so, like you would expect, Leah is, she's miserable. And so, I wanted to bring attention to the word um affliction so genesis 29 31 this is where because of that torment because of the difficulty that leah is facing with being hated by her sister and jacob god he he basically has mercy on her and they don't describe it as mercy but that's what we can take from this like he he feels bad for her and he opens up her wound and he makes rachel barren um and so after that happens, then Leah, um, she gets pregnant with her son and she calls him Reuben. And she dis the description that they give for Reuben and what she said is, Because the Lord has looked upon my afflictions, for now my husband will love me. And affliction, I use, I'm going to be using strong definitions whenever I define any of these words. And I'll make sure to put the um, strong number um, on the screen somewhere here, there, every, somewhere on the screen will be <laughs> the strong definitions number. So you'll know if it, if that on the screen, it'll be in the description box. So you'll know um, what the strong number is so you can find the definition for yourself. Um, so basically... Affliction means poverty or misery. So we know by that more than likely in this reference, she's saying because of her misery, God has looked, you know, he's looked upon her um, because of obviously the the, horrible, the situation she's in, um, <laughs> the difficult situation she's in. But what I really, it just, it's like, come on, girl, why? She, <laughs> She, she's like, oh, he's looked upon me and he's looked upon my affliction and, you know, maybe now my husband will love me. Uh, no. So, <laughs> he, he doesn't. This doesn't change anything. Having having um, Jacob's child doesn't change anything for the way that Jacob feels about Leah. He still doesn't feel any, any different, any more connected to her. So, um, Leah gets pregnant again and... And the second time she gets pregnant, she names her son Simon. And she says, now this time, my husband will be attached to me. And this is verse 34. And I'm like, oh, Lord, this poor girl. Like, she just, she doesn't get it. That <laughs> having his kids is not going to change anything. The way this man feels about you, the, the anger and the resentment he has towards you, having children isn't going to change that. And I mean, I think that goes in general with any relationship, like having a child with someone is not going to change the way they feel about you. So I'm just saying. Anyway, so 
what I wanted to point out, why I wanted to point out that is because she used the word attached that maybe now her husband will be attached to her. And attached with the strong definition means to be joined. So really what she's hoping for at this point, well, the first child she was like, maybe this will make them love me. This child she's thinking, maybe this will make us be joined together and really be partners. So she's, she's not only wanting his love but okay she's had the first child and realized okay I, I guess I'm not gonna get his love but maybe the second child will make us partners and what an awful thing that is to think that like the only way that your husband can bond with you or love you or or have a partnership with you which is supposed to be like natural a natural a part of marriage um is for you to have his child um that it's just horrible right it's a horrible situation to be in like I feel for Leah when I read this I'm like oh my god I can't I can't imagine how she was feeling emotionally um you know going going through that situation so as we already know Leah has a third son and now the third son is what really gets me and I'm like oh finally you know she gets it finally <laughs> so she has the third son and she names the third son um Judah and she says this time I will praise the Lord and that's why I said today that's what we're going to be talking about it took three times but she finally realized like you know I can't I can't change the situation I am in so I'm going to accept the situation I'm in and I'm just going to thank the Lord for what I do have so what I do have is three beautiful sons who are healthy and they're thriving and that's enough for me you know I'm going to praise the Lord for what I do have and I'm not going to focus on what's not happening which is having a husband who loves me having a sister who bonds and wants to have a relationship with me having a husband who looks at me as a partner I don't have those things but I'm going to praise the Lord for what I do have and so I'm like uh that was like my Thank you, Jesus. She finally understood. Like, it finally came together. And I'm always now thinking in my own head, in my own personal life, like, Lord Jesus, please let me have my, my Leah moment. And I hope it doesn't take three times of disastrous things happening. But hopefully I'll realize, and that's kind of kind of why I've been kind of changing the direction of, of Shobi and, and my, my business in general is because I want that to be my focus in life and so I feel like the easiest way to do that is to also make that the focus of my blog and and the business that I'm trying to build so just recognizing that despite what's going on does it <laughs> that doesn't matter I'm gonna praise God anyways because he is a perfect all-knowing God and he's always merciful and loving and his grace is just everlasting and that has to be enough for me you know even when things aren't going the way I want them to that that is enough and that has to be enough 